Joining us now, senior research analyst at Newberger Berman, Daniel Flax. Daniel, what are you looking for from Apple? Because this, again, a Facebook and a Twitter problem. Those are social media networks. Apple is a, con a consumer like electronics giant, and they don't have the same, quite the same privacy problems and user growth problems that a Facebook and Twitter do. I think that's right, Dagan. I think what we'll look for this evening is certainly the performance of the iPhone business, which we know is in a seasonally weak quarter, but also the health of the ecosystem and really understanding how services is performing. And then looking out, we'll, we'll of course get new products likely in September. And ultimately, the key for Apple is to build a differentiated user experience and leverage newer technologies like augmented reality in order to attract new users and keep their users happy and ultimately within their ecosystem. Do you think that, that Apple is going to be able to provide investors what they want to hear about the new iPhones? Are they all going to be released in September or are we going to see like what we saw last year where some were released in September and then December quarter? I think it's possible that they all get announced in September. We'll have to see with the production ramp whether the availability of the devices will all be in September or some or, or one of them might come a little bit later. But ultimately, I think what's key for the company is that the product needs to be ready when they launch it and ultimately bring it to the market. Apple, what we've seen historically, would rather be a little bit late if necessary to get the product right. And when, when you Think about what they're doing. It's not just about this single quarter or a single product. It's really what they're trying to do over the medium to longer term and create an environment that the users trust them and want to have a secure experience in the Apple platform. Daniel, for, for a long time now, investors have been pushing up all these FANG stocks, the, the big tech stocks, together in, in unison. Are we at a point now? where investors are starting to discriminate, where they're saying, all right, you know, Amazon is putting out good numbers. You know, we're not going to punish their stock, but, you know, you, the social media guys, Twitter, Facebook, just aren't living up to expectations. Are we seeing a bifurcation, finally, in tech stocks and looking at, you know, pulling apart the winners and the losers? I think, John, what it's going to come down to is ultimately the growth. And so we've seen in the case of, say, Alphabet, where they're growing in their core search business, in YouTube, in the cloud. Amazon, which you referenced, is doing a good job both in their core e-commerce platform and newer areas like um, Amazon Web Services, their cloud business and advertising is a newer business for them, too. In the case of others like Facebook, where the growth, as, as management has telegraphed, is slowing, you have that coupled with the fact that there's really a larger issue at play here in terms of how they are going to navigate the future of their user experience. And as we, I think, all appreciate privacy, data, security, that's really, I think, rightfully coming to the fore. And Facebook and others are trying to figure out how best to, to, to be, uh, allow their users to both uh, participate in the platform and protect their their data and so the, the market to your point is is certainly going to differentiate a lot more we think over the next several quarters and, and years but they still get lumped in all together and the Wall Street Journal has a story the market section has a story today about the the NYSE fang index and it includes every company all of these major companies Facebook Amazon Netflix Google's parent Apple Twitter also Tesla Nvidia and Alibaba but that's now in correction territory it's down 10 percent from the recent high High, the recent record on June 20th. Not the first time it's happened this year. So that's a really important reminder, Lindsay. This is the second time that group of stocks has entered correction territory this year. Right. And I, I'd like to hear what you have to say, but I kind of think that this move has been overdone. This isn't a sector that's entirely dead. Yes, growth is slowing and maybe there's bigger problems within the social media aspect of technology. Um, but Amazon had great numbers. Microsoft, Google, Google's parent Al Alphabet. These were all really good reports. Even Netflix, I know it was a miss. That's one I really want to ask you about. It's down 24% from its most recent high this year. Um, the subscriber growth, the net ads, the outlook was weaker than expected. Do you think that this sell-off in Netflix especially is overdone as well as the overall fan group? Well, 
with respect to the overall fan group and Netflix, it's going to come down, I think, to each company's ability to drive performance and ultimately grow. I think what we appreciate in video, and, ne in, and Netflix has certainly done a, a terrific job, is that they need to continue to invest in content and really drive adoption, certainly here, but also internationally. But there's competition, of course, and others are looking to get into the space as well. When we look at some of the broader fang, or, or, or to your point on the on a lot of these fast-growing companies, we, we really look for them and analyze them one by one. I think it's difficult to draw a, a, a broad uh, brush across them. So, for example, you mentioned Microsoft. That's a company we continue to like. And our research from talking to customers and analyzing the trends ar around the shift to the cloud suggests that Microsoft has a multi-year growth runway. And so we, we discussed Alphabet, which we continue to like. But we think as bottom-up stock pickers, you really need to be specific in what you're trying to look for in an investment. And ultimately, we, we take a longer-term horizon. And so when we look at some of these names over the next one to two years, we, we think they're opportunities. And yes, there'll be market sell-offs, but if you have a longer-term horizon, they could be good buying opportunities. Well, John, one thing I want to point out, though, Apple, and the, again, the journal has written a story about this last week, Apple is extremely vulnerable in terms of iPro, iPhone production to the fight that we've right. entered into with China, because they can't readily, their iPhones are made in China by Foxconn. They can't readily shift production to another country for that. And we will surely hear about this on the call, but how vulnerable is Apple to this trade fight? Well, you know, the, the Chinese have a, a limited ways that they could punch back at the United States right. if we increase tariffs. We, they, they, they sell a lot more to us than we sell to them, so they can't put tariffs on everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the possible things that they could do is make life more difficult for the American companies that are operating in China. Now, it's a tough call for them because they, they want to make uh, the, the Chinese economy uh, receptive to foreign investment. But that one of the ways that they could make things difficult for the United States is by... Increased make, inspections. They could send exactly. inspectors. Help, they could help. increase the spying that they do on our corporate executives here and really yeah. around the world. They could hold up goods at the ports, whether they're going out or coming into the nation. They're a whole, are you, we getting any information about that at all? I mean, is information starting to trickle out? Well, well, you know, I think the next big question is whether talks start up again between the U.S. and China. You know, uh, the, the U.S. and the Europeans announced last week that, that they seem to have an agreement in the works. Is the U.S. going to start talking to China again? So we, that's on hold right now.